name is Aria and today I'm going to do another highly requested video and this is how to find a reputable breeder. You guys have been asking me this on TikTok for so long and then I always get like individual emails in my inbox and DMs about this. So I figured I would go ahead and do this video for you guys. Um, these are my personal and professional opinions as being in this field for 13 years. So I'd like to think uh, I would kind of know, especially because a lot of you guys refer to me as really reputable. Um, I get a lot of feedback from you guys, which is awesome. So let's get right into it. I always research things first, like as if I'm you guys. So I just Google to see what kind of articles come up, what they say, what kind of information that they give you, um, how to determine how to find someone who's reputable. So I've noticed that in my research, a lot of these articles are super outdated. Like the Humane Society, ASPCA have them from like 2008. 12 and older um, this was like you know right but this was before social media is like really the king of advertisement and marketing a lot of these articles have um, one thing in common and that is in my opinion one of the biggest myths um, which is a breeder is not reputable if they do not let you come to their house and view their dogs view their whole entire house their property the puppies etc that is like really outdated um, there are some breeders that still do that of course but like in my opinion I hardly ever have people come here and look at puppies um, I accept deposits on my puppies once they're three weeks old and a lot of my puppies fly out I hardly ever sell local so it's like you're not gonna see the, you're not gonna come here, you're not gonna see, you know, my house, you're not gonna see how I live in person. Um, but that's why a breeder needs to have an extremely strong social media presence. Um, another thing that happened is, so there is a company, well, there's the USDA, and they um, actually, uh, monitor commercial and register commercial breeders. Um, I think you have to have a certain amount of dogs before you're considered a USDA breeder. Um, so anyways, they come and they do inspections and things like that. Well, back in the day, they actually used to make you register uh, your kennel name with your address and that information was posted on the USDA website. Well, some, let's just say rescue advocates uh, would get these people's address, would harass them, would go to their homes. Uh, there was also a murder involved at a breeder's home. So um, the addresses were taken off of the website and now you can't have any information like that. People would go to Google Maps, they'd inspect their properties, you know, all that stuff because they'd have their address. So now this day and age, and I've, I'm sure you guys have seen a lot of reports, a lot of um, you know, things on the news where people's puppies are getting stolen. Um, breeders will have people come to their house interested in a puppy, they'll steal that puppy and they'll be gone and that's it, you know what I mean? Um, so it's actually really dangerous to have people that you don't know come into your house. Not only that, um, they can bring things into your house like parvo and um, you know, other illnesses or um, things that can affect your puppy's health. So it's actually really unsafe to have random people come into your house. Um, so what I do is I FaceTime people. Like I said, I have a really strong social media presence. So everybody sees how I live every day. They see what my dogs look like. They see what my house looks like. I make videos constantly. So I'm very transparent. So you definitely want a breeder that's going to be transparent. And that kind of leads into their, you know, Facebook, their Instagram, their YouTube, whatever social medias they have, they should have a strong presence on there. So they should have likes, um, they should have comments, they should, sometimes they do have reviews and sometimes they don't, it kind of just depends. Um, and you know, you can, you can also get references um, by looking at their social media. Um, and that's another thing that they can provide for you is references for people who have purchased their puppies in the past, um, who thought about it, who's had conversations with them, that kind of thing. Uh, so yeah, going to a breeder's house is not necessarily a, not being able to go there is not necessarily a red flag. Um, I know some breeders personally who are reputable, who don't let people come to their house, who do sell their puppies local, but they're, they'll meet at like their veterinarian or, um, you know, some reputable place in the public where they feel more safe. Another thing that a reputable breeder is going to do for you is FaceTime. Um, they're, I mean, I, I can walk around and show you a video of my house if you'd like. Um, a breeder should be able to do that. They should be able to show you their whelping rooms, their nurseries, um, where they keep their dogs, all that stuff, their house. All right, so another thing that I think a reputable breeder should have is a website. A lot of breeders don't have websites. I 
I don't understand that. Um, if you go to my website, I have a frequently asked questions page that you can look at um, that answers a lot of your questions about the breed, about travel, about pricing, all that kind of stuff. I have a page with people who I've sold the puppies to, which I need to update. Thanks for the reminder. Um, with pictures of the families and videos of people getting surprised with puppies, um, all that kind of stuff. And they're, they're gonna have pictures and videos of their puppies on there. Um, and that's another thing is the pictures and the videos. Um, a reputable breeder is going to put time and effort into their program, which means their pictures are going to look nice. They're not gonna send you a picture of their puppy sitting outside with a crappy cell phone pic or um, their puppy on their couch or you know just you know what I mean like they're gonna put effort into the photos they're gonna use props they're gonna use lighting they're gonna make you know their their puppy shine in those photos so um, that's something that you want to check out you definitely want to check out videos too because a lot of people unfortunately can Photoshop nowadays so they can make things appear not as great as they actually are um, so you always want to make sure that uh, you're looking at photos and you can tell the time and effort they put into it. Um, also, it's crazy because I admin a lot of Facebook um, French Bulldog groups and we approve posts that come through from other breeders, obviously. Sometimes I'll see pictures of puppies in baby swimming pools with pine shavings in them. Pictures of puppies in crates, wire bottom crates. Pictures in puppy of puppies in gross conditions with newspaper all over. It's just, it's crazy the amount of crap that people are willing to put out there. Like that is just, it just blows my mind. And so for me, a photo and a video says a lot. Um, another thing that a reputable breeder is going to do for you is be very extremely knowledgeable on the breed that they're breeding, obviously. So you are going to be able to go to that breeder and ask any questions you have um, about the breed, about the breed's conditions, about genetics, about anything. A breeder should be able to tell you good, bad, personality, all of that. So definitely challenge your breeder and ask them a lot of questions. And I've even had people um, go and research the breed first and then like kind of test me on it. Um, my very, very, very first, one of my very first French Bulldog litters, um, I actually had a person reach out to me who wanted a male puppy from that litter, full AKC. Um, and she came with her husband. They came to my house to look at the puppy. Um, and I, I probably talked to these people for a week. They asked me all these questions. I answered them, nutrition questions, like all this stuff. They came to my house to look at the puppy. And I kind of got a feeling, because I've obviously been in the veterinary industry, that um, her husband was a veterinarian because I could tell out of the corner of my eye he was um, flexing uh, the puppy's legs, kind of feeling it over, kind of giving it an exam um, while we were sitting there. And she was kind of distracting me, asking me the questions. But in the end, I found out that she was a CVT and a surgical tech, and he was a veterinarian. So they were like, dude, we were completely blown away, especially because they were like an older couple and they were thrown off by all my tattoos. They said, She's like, when I first met you, I was like, oh, oh. <laughs> like she's all tatted, like she's a bad bitch, whatever. But she's like, once I got to know you and I, um, we asked you all the questions and you were just like right on top of it, we were super impressed. She was like, you should be really proud of the program that you're running and the knowledge that you have. So I thought that was extremely awesome. So like literally a vet tried to trick me and I passed. <laughs> so yeah, your vet or your uh, breeder needs to be extremely knowledgeable like in all facets of the breed. Another huge one is health testing. If your breeder does not health test, they are not reputable whatsoever. Um, genetic tests, I do 180 genetic panel through optimal selection. Um, that's gonna tell you diversity and it's gonna tell you traits, genetics, um, anything they carry, etc. That panel alone is $130. What that panel is going to do is it's going to look at 180 congenital and hereditary defects and it's going to tell you what your dog can pass on to the puppies if you potentially breed that dog. Um, that's literally step one. I do that like within three weeks of the puppy being born. Like I literally do that ASAP because it, for me, if I'm going to keep a puppy into my program, obviously that puppy needs to be clear. Um, so that's like step one. And there's breeders that don't even do that. Like that just is crazy to me. Another thing that breeders like to do for health testing is OFA certifications, which stands for Orthopedic Foundation of Animals. Um, so now this for me is controversial because 
I only do OFAs for the haters because people are going to be, they always come to me like, oh, do you even OFA? Like, yeah, sure, I do them, but OFA for me is really not that, I mean, you guys, I've kind of explained it to you already. Um, they're not veterinarians. They're literally people who are trained to look at x-rays and your dog is going to be graded on like a standard scale. Um, Frenchies are unlike any other breed. I mean, obviously all breeds are different, but um, if you looked at like a Labrador and a Golden Retriever's x-rays are probably gonna be extremely similar. But if you compared a Golden Retriever's x-rays to a Frenchie's x-rays, like their spine, obviously genetically they're completely different. So I trust my vet's opinion on my dogs 100% over orthopedic foundation of animals. No offense, but my veterinarian specializes in my breed. Um, he knows, he sees the dog from a puppy. He sees exactly how the dog moves. He sees the x-rays. He sees the dog multiple times. Like I just don't think that accurately you sending x-rays to one person sitting behind a computer is like, oh, pass or fail. Like that's just to me, I don't know. I don't, I would rather have, I feel more comfortable having my vet do in a complete full analysis. Um, but for OFAs, typically what I do is trachea, hips and um, elbows, luxating patellas. Um, and then I have my vet check as well. Hearts, eyes, um, spine, trachea, a soft palate and stenosis. Um, that to me is extremely important for the breed and I'm actually currently working on a form that is going to um, have blood work, x-rays, all type uh, sorts of examinations just specifically for French Bulldogs so we can have that in a PDF so my dogs can get a full workup, um, pass fail, scores, um, anything wrong with them, any concerns, all that stuff. But I could talk about health forever because you guys know I'm OCD about it. So there's that. All in all, if your breeder does not health test, not reputable. No matter how good they treat their dogs, no matter how good their dogs look, no. It's not gonna fly, sorry, point blank. Like, and that's something that you can t ask the breeder straight up for, from the jump. Do you health test? If they say no, done, on to the next. Another thing a reputable breeder is going to do is let you know who their veterinarian is up front. Um, I have no problem telling people where my vet is, giving his business cards, giving his information. I love referring people to my vet. Even though he's super busy, um, I recommend everybody go and see him. Um, obviously that can't happen if you're out of state, but I do recommend going um, and asking. You can ask the breeder for the veterinarian's information. It's it's not like they can call and get specific information by law about a puppy, but they can at least get kind of like a referral and they can confirm that you're a client there. All right, so a reputable breeder is not going to be pushy. Um, we breed to better the breed. We breed to you know, connect families with healthy puppies. Um, we back our productions. I'm not gonna push a dog on anybody for a sale. Um, I will keep a dog for six months if I have to, if they don't sell. Now, typically I usually sell my puppies before 16 weeks. I don't think I've ever had a puppy older than that. Um, but also, I'm not gonna be pushy. If you don't want a dog, I'm not gonna, I'm not, or a puppy, I'm not gonna, you know what I mean? Be like, oh, well, what about this one? Well, you don't want that one, what about this one? Or I have a litter, it's, if you're interested, let me know, we'll talk about it, otherwise, by <laughs> like, yeah, a reputable breed is not gonna be pushy. We're not here to just have puppies flying out the door, so. All right, another thing in my opinion that breeders should do for you is offer extras. Um, what I mean by that is training programs, boarding programs, that kind of thing. Um, all my puppies come back to me if they're local, obviously, and um, say, you know, you're going on vacation or you have um, to go out of town for work or whatever, I provide boarding and doggy daycare for all my previous clients. So, um, and I've done it before. They love coming here. They love playing with my dogs and also they grew up here so they're comfortable um so it's not like you're bringing your dog to a kennel where they don't know or you're you're having your dog at a doggy daycare where they could be stressed out no like they are here in the home um you know and a lot of them love to come here so it's it's awesome and it gives you peace of mind um i also offer training packages beginner and immediate advanced training packages uh, and then I do video updates and tips and all that stuff throughout the whole process so that you can continue the training, see what they've learned, um, that kind of stuff. All that information is on my website too if you guys are interested in that. Another kind of common misconception that people say um, that a reputable breeder should obviously always do is have their dogs AKC titled or have championships in their line. 
Um, you guys know how I feel about uh, titles. I really don't care. Uh, title is just confirmation. It has nothing to do with your dog's health. It has nothing to do with your puppy's genetics. It's literally the structure. So it's literally based on structure to breed standard, and that's it. Um, a champion dog is a dog that just looks good. Uh, people can pay for championships. People can fake papers. Um, people can lie, if, and if you don't get the pedigree and you just get the AKC registration, um, you won't know if there's actual champions in their line until you've already processed that paperwork. Um, it means nothing to me, and also another thing that a lot of championship breeders do is they line breed, which is inbreeding, which they'll do, you know, they'll breed a father to a daughter or whatever. I don't like line breeding. I think it's gross. Genetics says it's fine. I don't care. I, I don't like it. So inbreeding is a no for me. Championship titles doesn't matter. If you actually are into the show world, um, that's something that you would look for. If you're a championship breeder, cool, that's what you're gonna look for, but as a pet, it literally means that your dog looks good, and that's it. Uh, your French Bulldog can be a grand champion and also have a grade four heart murmur. So, the fact that people say that titled dogs means that they're rep from a reputable breeder, that is not the case. Okay, another thing that I want to touch on is pricing. So I get a lot of shit for the way I price my puppies, but let me just put it into perspective for you. So coach purses have amazing quality, right? They use leather, they're great. Louis Vuitton, amazing leather, great quality, right? Louis Vuittons are a pretty much uh, a lot more expensive than a coach, right? But I would say that if you've had the two, quality is really what you're, I mean, it's really the same, you're just purchasing a brand name. Louis Vuitton is going to charge you for what they think their product is worth. The time that they put in, the effort that they put in, the quality of the materials, the brand name, etc. That's what you're getting charged for, period. They are allowed to charge you whatever they want to. They can, just like I am allowed to charge whatever I want for the time and the effort and the experience and you know the dedication that I put into my program. Every breeder can do that. Now, if you see a breeder saying, oh yeah, this Frenchie, this purebred Frenchie is so healthy, 1500. Oh yeah, I'll sell it to you for 800 because like I have a family, no. The breeders who are just out here to make money and who are not reputable are going to charge a lot less because they are trying to pump those dogs out, they're trying to get them out, they're not putting the money into their program that it's worth. It's just not going to happen. Um, Google the pricing for the breed that you're looking for um, for 2020 and it will give you a good range. Now pricing is based on color. A lot of people are like, that's not reputable. That's just how it is. That's with everything. That's with every breed. You know, a blue and tan Doberman could cost more than a black and tan because of the coloring. Um, you go to the shelter, right? They're gonna charge you more money for a puppy because of age. They're gonna charge you more money for your pre a purebred dog because it's purebred. Shelters do the same structure that breeders do. If they can get more money for it, they're gonna do it. All right, so my battery died. I don't know where I left off. I think I was talking about pricing. Um, so yeah, pricing is based off color. That's just the way it goes. Um, there are breeders out there that are charging twelve to thirty thousand dollars for the colors I charge five thousand dollars for. So um, I'm not out here to. I mean, this is my hobby. I'm not out here to make money off of it. So I'm gonna price accordingly. Um, but people are still shocked about how much Frenchies actually cost. Like it's crazy. So yeah, I just gave you the Frenchie as an example, but Google what your breed costs in 2020 and you'll kind of get an idea. So if you see a breeder out there trying to sell you a dog for substantially less than what it's worth, that is a red flag. So you wanna avoid that. All right, so the last thing I wanna to touch on is the health guarantees um, and the contracts. So a reputable breeder is going to provide you a health guarantee that guarantees your puppy, usually for one year and mine is for two. Um, and it kind of, gives you peace of mind, right? We're not God, we can't have a contract that's gonna cover every little thing that comes up, but of course in our health testing, we are going to make sure that we're doing the most, the absolute most we can to make sure that we provide healthy puppies. Um, so for me, even if there was something that popped up that 
was detrimental or you know to the health of the puppy um, or something that you know wasn't covered I would still do the right thing so it, it is peace of mind especially when you're spending a lot of money for a purebred dog um, so all reputable breeders are going to provide that for you like hands down no matter what um, another thing is a puppy contract we are going to make sure that you sign that that puppy that you have is going to be spoiled and loved and taken care of and fed right and never abused all of that um, you're going to have to sign that you're also going to have to sign saying that you will never give your puppy to a rescue or a shelter or anything like that we will always take the puppy back we will always take the dog back no matter what no matter how old they are it doesn't matter the dog can come back here um, and that's why you hardly ever see reputable breeder purebred dogs in your shelters French Bulldogs actually only contribute to 0.1% of shelters, and I think purebred from reputable breeder, less than 5%. Um, you don't really find amazing purebreds in the shelter. You don't. I'm sorry. I just, I could go on, on about it forever, but that's for another day. <laughs> So anyways, I hope that I touched on enough topics for you guys. Um, I hope that this video helps you um, in your search to find a reputable breeder. Um, there are websites that you can go through to find breeders. Um, obviously, you can do a quick Google search and find a website that's the actual breeder's website. You can go through AKC Marketplace, which all of those dogs are going to be from breeders that AKC registers. Um, so you can do that. Um, websites like Craigslist, Hoobly, Puppy Find, those have tons of scams, tons of backyard breeders. I would not recommend going on those websites whatsoever. There are some breeders that do um, advertise on Puppy Find that are reputable, but you just kind of have to ask those questions to make sure um, that they are who they say they are. Um, and if you guys also want me to do a video on scammers, uh, how to avoid a puppy scam, I can do that as well. So anyways, I hope that helped you guys. Um, if you have any other questions, I know you guys always ask me questions on TikTok. I always try to get back to you and then my DMs are always super full. Um, but I do get this question a lot, so I hope this answered a lot of the concerns and the questions that you guys had about reputable breeders and how to find one. So I posted a photo since I didn't have a main uh, video last week and I asked you guys what kind of videos you wanted to see so I'm going to go through that list for my next one um, but I hope you guys enjoyed it and like I said if you have any questions or comments or whatever leave them down below I'll try to answer them for you. Uh, make sure you subscribe, turn your notifications on and I will see you in the next one. Bye!